Hi, I'm Kendria. I need you to go like, follow, and subscribe. Soul Productions. What's up, everyone? And this is Next Level Thinking. What's up, everyone? It's another episode of Next Level Thinking. It's your host, Chris Holmes, and helping you execute it to the next level because you know you do deserve greatness. So during this time, we want to keep people motivated, energized, and pumped. And today I have my special guest by the name of... Bridget Therese Romo. Awesome, awesome. So go ahead and tell the audience a little bit about yourself. I see the trophies over here and things like that. Uh, tell them how great you are. Like, tell them the audience. <laughs> Well, thanks for having me, Chris. Um, the trophies are a uh, representation of my extensive background in the fitness industry. I used to compete um, nationally, internationally, and um, fitness was really kind of one of those things that changed the course of my life. And just to give you a little backstory, um, I grew up in Wisconsin, uh, mm -hmm. homegrown Wisconsin country girl, and um, got married really young, had a son, and um, went through kind of a tragic loss with the second baby. And after that was when I started competing. And it was something that kind of pulled me out of depression and pulled me out of- And I'm glad you went there because I was about to ask, usually when it comes to athletics, it like it's yeah. a way to get away from things, get your mind going. It is, it is. And um, it was definitely something that pulled me out. And I fell in love with it because it was so empowering. And it was just, of course, when you exercise and you move your body, there's that factor as well. Um, but competing was just a whole other level. So I did that for a few years, ended up moving to Houston, where I live now. Um, I've been here six years. I don't compete, but I still um, value all of the things that fitness has taught me. And I just use it on more of a day-to-day -day level now. Um, so that's where the trophies come from. Nice, nice, nice. So I want to go a little bit more in detail. Like what are some of the lessons or top three lessons that you learn from doing athletics? Uh, I can probably think of some on my own, but this is yeah. your time to shine where you can definitely <laughs> tell the audience a little bit more about that and also encourage other people in their day-to-day -day life because this is a time where people are stuck at the house. They're like, I'm about to lose yeah. my mind. <laughs> so what can you go ahead and spread a little light on that? Yeah, um, my top three things I would say for sure, one was learning discipline. Because um, when you're doing a competition, you're, I mean, you can't mess up on your nutrition, you can't mess up on your workouts. And I like, oh man, I can't get no cake. <laughs> yeah, you can't have no cake for, and for months at a time. So it was, you really, really learn discipline. You're like, okay, if I want to show up on that stage with the best body or best version of myself, I really have to follow these rules and really have to stay with it. Because if I don't, I'm going to look a fool come show day. So that was always my mentality that kept me disciplined. But learning such strict discipline, like, kind of translated into other areas of my life. Like, okay, if I want to make this advancement in my career, or if I want to work hard for something else, then I just kind of take that same structure and apply it somewhere else. So discipline was one drive, because you kind of hang that carrot in front of you. And you're like, okay, I'll do whatever it takes. I'll find a way, like that stuff gets expensive. So you find a way to be resourceful, get sponsors. Um, I want to add on something before you go forward. Like sure. what is, let me see how I can ask this. I, I'll ask it like this. What is your why to like ignite the driving force? Because when you tell like, how do, most people are going to be like, how did you get that drive? But there's something behind it that actually pushes it because, you know, it's common when people yeah. face obstacles and things like that, it just give up. But usually it's their why that actually, mm -hmm. like, no matter what they're going through in their own lifetime, it yeah. really pushes them to go through. The first time I ever competed, my why was, um, and kind of, I kind of glazed over it, but I lost um, my second baby. She was still born. And so, like I said, I was in super deep depression and, and also just, I was just kind of an ugly place, as you can imagine. It was in the winter in Wisconsin, and I stopped working out because I'd stopped eating. I just stopped doing everything. And finally, I was, I, I still had my son. So I was like, you know, at some point, I need to get myself together for him, if nothing else. And I, one of my friends was competing, and I was just like, you know what, F it. Now's the time to do it, which probably wasn't but it was something that gave me I have like I have nothing else to lose at this point so why not just put all my energy and all my focus into that so I have something to think about that was my first why and it really just kind of propelled me forward 
Um, and then I kind of, I guess in a way got addicted to the feeling of being accomplished or working hard to get to the stage and just kind of seeing what I could do with my body. It was just kind of, um, the feeling of empowerment and confidence that came with it was just mm-hmm. something that I wanted to experience over and over again. And you said something very interesting. Uh, and it's like the key phrase when my back was against the wall, it's just something about that is like, you know, you need to get some things done. You always say, I'll get to it later, or maybe yeah. another time. But when yeah. your back is against the wall, it's like life looks at you in the face. Like if you start doing this now or else. <laughs> right. Right. For sure. I mean, and that's, you know, you always wonder why we go through difficult times and, and it's an opportunity and I've learned this multiple times over and over throughout my, my short life. But you, when you go through these times, it really kind of is an opportunity for you to grow or for you can just kind of crumble into a pile. But crumbling into a pile is never going to get you anywhere. So I've always found a way to grow. And honestly, fitness has been a very good avenue instead of turning to like alcohol or drugs or something a little bit more damaging. Like fitness is a great way to like, put your energy into or you like clear your mind or like put your bad you know your bad day into a a round of lifting or just whatever that is for other for other people but there's something about moving your body and doing something that it actually does something on the inside before it even becomes something that like I never sure the physical part was part of it but I got more I think out of out of it mentally and um spiritually for a back, lack of a better word um, mm-hmm. than I did ever for like how my body looked. Yep, exactly. Especially when you start getting to the zone and start putting things into action. It mm-hmm. just takes your mind away from the thought process of what are you thinking in that dark time yeah. to actually taking the action so you can start moving forward and yeah. go ahead and hit on like the, I believe the third thing that you got from all this. Oh, my third thing. Hmm, let's see. Um, drive, passion, um, or did I say passion? I said, what did I say? I said, um, the, 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 the last uh, one was drive. Yeah. 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 Um, my third thing I think would probably be, um, I just got to learn a lot about myself and, uh, I got to learn a lot in the process, not only about my, myself, but about how your body works. I learned a lot about nutrition. I learned a lot about exercise and things that I can apply and kind of continue to use throughout my day, day to day life. Um, and like I said, I don't really, I don't really have any plans in competing anymore, but all of that, that I worked so hard for before, I still use it to this day. Like I still know how to eat healthy. I still know how to work out and I use those tools. Um, but on a much more balanced style of living, like there, I can, I can have cake today if I want to. So there, there's just something about that mental side of it where it's like, I know what I need to do when I do those things. But at the same time, I don't need to be so stressed out about it. So there are so many great things that I learned along the way that I would have never um, probably sought out on my own. That the educational aspect of it was mm-hmm. really, really helpful. And I'm glad you brought that up too. Uh, I'm going to use a, a little my own personal things to relate to it because I remember yeah. when I dropped down to 205 and now I was like, wow, I'm less than my high school weight. But it was just completely crazy driven. Like it was just water, salads, uh, mm. and all healthy stuff. Like no desserts at all. Yeah. You know, and I was had an extreme high goal, which of course I met it. But you yeah. also mentioned too, like lifestyle. I was like, yeah. at that moment I had it, but I was like, I can't hold on to this long term because right. Right. I, unless I was competing for something. But I just want to throw that in kind of, kind of like a little fun story to add on so I can relate exactly. to that as well, because you will burn yeah. out unless you train for a competition. I can understand, yeah. but you hit on something very key, which is knowing about yourself. And mm-hmm. I feel like through this journey or like in the words of Nipsey Hussle, the marathon, <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. need to figure out who you are because once you figure out who you are, that's when you really start to shine that you know that light bulb goes off and you really start making yourself uh different from everybody else because you are being you so go ahead and tell a little bit more on that because not only just the physical mental but how you view life and things like that so go ahead sure um i think it really what for for me it was very much um i guess an awakening i i was raised very strict like in a homeschool very Christian family. Everyone is so, so conservative. Don't you go outside. <laughs> I, I mean, thank God we lived out in the country so we could go outside, but like we could, there were so many restrictions on our life that we never, 
um, I didn't really get to explore. I, my identity was whatever my parents told me I needed to be at that point, if that makes sense. So, so you're just like you're like, living like under what your parents yeah. thought your life should be? Okay, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. So the, the second I deviated away from that, I was like the black sheep of the family. I'm like, hold on, I'm just trying to have a life. I'm 20 years old, you know? Um, but it, it, that was also like a super challenging time in my life too. But, but it, when I broke away from that and kind of got out of the mold is when I was able to kind of be like, okay, who am I? And I feel like to some degree, you're always exploring who you are, or you're always at least growing. So there's always more, more to be discovered. I don't feel like one day you're like, oh, now I know exactly who I am. Um, because I do think you can grow and evolve. Um, but you find out who your, what your core beliefs are. Like, am I religious because of my parents or am I religious because I believe that mm. this is what I believe? Am I, did, are these my values or are these my parents' values? And you kind of just have to, for me, it was like going through a whole process of like, what do I believe? Who am I? What's important to me? What am I taking? What am I leaving? And just kind of repackaging my life to, to fit what I felt uh, was worked for me. And I, I feel like it's always ongoing. And, I, and it is ongoing. And I'm glad you said that because I can't imagine what, how many, uh, actually, I'm going to change that. I know for certain there are so many different people that have that as the biggest obstacle of just being okay with being different, especially like um, yeah. wanting a different kind of goal that your parents don't want to or don't see yeah. because they don't have a vision for that. And yeah. of course, like you were saying, you'd be shown as a black sheep, like, why are you doing that? It's never going to work. You're mm -hmm. crazy. Look at so and so and so. They did this too. They fail. And yeah. just making you feel terrible for even trying it. Yeah. And I feel like a lot of times you have so many people that don't really walk into themselves fully because of what their parents just told them over and over again in their head. Yeah. And you even have people in the professional fields, like, you know, forties, fifties and up who are still living under what they, yeah. their parents said, and they're not fully happy because they're not walking within their purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And that, and that's so true too. And I think that's one of the big things I learned um, throughout this whole process was, I mean, I was at such a, I'd gone through so much by the time I'd even lost um, my second baby that I was kind of had one of those moments where I'm like, F everything. Like, like I don't care what people think anymore. And I'm just going to do what, at this I'm going to do me. <laughs> I'm going to do me because nobody's walked in my shoes. Nobody's know knows what I've gone through. And at this point, um, you know, I don't care anymore. So I finally got to that point where I was just like, I'm either going to live for, myself which sounds super selfish and weird because we're not trained no actually that, right? you um you know i gotta pit, dig in right now because you are uh right on that we are trained not to think like that but yeah. uh, a lot of i'm gonna be on like nothing on anybody's practice and things like that a lot of traditions right. and things like that teach you that and yeah you forget to value yourself to the point yeah. where when you go through life, you don't do anything for yourself. Now, of course, share it and do things for others, but you got to take care of yourself mm -hmm. at the same time. Yeah. But like, we need to change that. It, start doing things that for yourself sense. because that's part of your happiness. Yeah. And uh, from just hearing that, it's like, as soon as you start speaking, especially with uh, the way you're going right now, it, it definitely yeah. reminds me of, I don't know if you heard of a person by the name of Gary Vee. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's definitely yeah. spot on. The Jersey Shore, he will tell oh, exactly yeah. how he feels. Uh, but yeah. you have to start doing that and do things. Even I have mentors that will tell, like, you need to do things selfishly, even though that may seem like a daunting word to others. Yeah. For yourself, you have to take care of yourself. Yes. And, it's still, and it still feels weird to say that, especially for you in my generation, your generation, where it's like that. We were still kind of raised that way. But think up for people like Rachel Hollis or some of these other women who are kind of stepping up and being like, hey, you know, if you're not taking care of yourself and you're not, you know, putting yourself first, how can you take care of people from an, an empty cup? Mm -hmm. And that's really kind of where you have to kind of shift your mentality, being like, if I'm taking care of myself, if I'm doing my gratitude practices, or if I'm working out, if I'm feeling healthy, then I can take that energy and that positivity and pour it into my kids or mm -hmm. pour it into my spouse or whatever aspects of life that you have, your job, you know, your friends. Um, but it is, it is an adjustment of going from like, putting everybody else first, thinking that's the right thing to do. Okay, to I'm going to throw you an alley because uh, I feel like you're coming up, I'm going to throw the ball to you again so you can go ahead yeah. and dunk it in. Uh, there is 
a tremendous amount of value of taking care of yourself because you are able to do bigger things. Like, for example, when you take care of yourself, you and yourself happily financially, you're in shape, you're able to do more things, you're able yeah. to give more. If you're financially set, you're right. able to give scholarships and things like that. Okay. So, but go ahead and tell the audience what you would do in the possibilities if they take care of themselves because you have so much of a negative view of being selfish. But I want you like, oh, I can do this if I do that. So you go ahead, just dunk it in right now. <laughs> can I talk about like what the, the, the good side of being putting yourself first? Yes. Yeah. Um, man, I mean, it's, it really is, it really is pouring from a full cup. Like, and I, I, I'm, I don't know if I can, I'll put it into practicalities, but like when I feel good about myself and when I work out, we'll use work out as an example, just since that's the kind of the track run. If, when I work out, I feel so much better and energized about myself. That's for one. So when I feel better and energized, I'm, and, and it always puts you in a good mood, I will give you that. So when you're in a good mood, you're energized, you're going to be so much, that's, I'm, I'm so much more pleasant to come home to when I'm like, just finished working out, I'm showered, I'm like, hey. I'm like, let her go work out. Yeah, let her go work out. Yeah. She's in a good mood. Yeah. If, I'm, if you come home and I'm just like, oh my God, my day was terrible. I didn't get to work out. Like, I mean, that's not fun to come home to or that's just not, I'm not. I'm going to drain you as soon as you walk in the door instead of being like, Hey, how was your day? Like, you know what I mean? There's just that difference of energy and energy was I have something I've really paid attention to over the last probably year and a half. Like, does this give me the good vibes or does this give me the bad vibes? See, now this I'm about to throw you another alley because you're just taking over the conversation and interviewing. Yeah, so I go know. ahead. I yeah, go right ahead. Right. Nah, this is your show. That's, That's what it's all that. about. Uh, energy is, so I'm giving you another alley. Energy is important. Because uh, people, I'm going to use uh, the old common phrase, like you are the average of the five people you surround yourself yeah. with. So if you surround yourself with people that's constantly complaining, negative, yeah. don't want to mm-hmm. do anything, just drained out, don't want to do anything positive in life, mm-hmm. nine times out of ten you'll be that average. But if you surround yourself with people who are great in the community, financially wealthy, uh, happy family, yeah. doing great things, you will to be the average of that. So go even more in depth of the importance of taking control of your energy and your surrounding yeah. circle. Yeah. And, and, and like, I, like I was saying, that's something I paid attention to so much more these time and these days, um, even so much as saying no to friends. If like, I'm like, mm, they're always draining or it's a one way relationship. I will, I've gotten to the place where I'm comfortable or a lot more comfortable, still work in progress, saying no to people or saying no to events or saying no to things. And that is simply for the, the pure aspect of protecting my energy, protecting who I'm pouring into and who's pouring into me. And I'm, I will tell you, it takes a while to get to that place to be comfortable saying no or being mm-hmm. like, sometimes I have to stop and be like, okay, why do I not feel like doing this? Is it, you know, and kind of just sit back and reflect. I'm like, am I being lazy? Is there an underlying reason? Like, do they drain me? Do I feel energized when I, you know, what does that look like and why do I want to say no? And then if it is just, maybe it's a night I just need to stay home and recharge and that's okay. Like if your friends are cool, they're going to understand that be like, look, I've also learned to just be more honest and shoot straight instead of be like, um, you know, make something up like, uh, you know, my dog died. I just don't even have a dog. It was something like that. Instead of being like, you know what? I've had a really rough day. I just really need to take some time for myself tonight. I'm really sorry. Or, or else just not even commit to plans if you don't want to go. Exactly. Like, don't tell your friend you will go and then just wait and plan on that day, like bailing. So you just really kind of learn how to protect your energy to be honest about it and a little bit more authentic in that process. Awesome, awesome. Very fantastic answer, especially now because you have to protect uh, your energy and there's just so much power into saying no. And I, it goes back to what we were saying earlier. Uh, we've been taught, trained to mm-hmm. do so much the other way around. So us saying like, eh, maybe not, or no, it just, yeah. in the beginning, it just feels off, but you're, because it right? it's different, but you're yeah. making like the best decision for yourself and for the future, because you rather say no to something that would be 
temporarily painful yeah. than saying yes and it'd be long term. <laughs> so yeah. I'll take yeah. the temporary pain because it'll phase yeah. off. So with all this going on and much more, we had the great energy, they getting all these uh, great jewels and much more. Uh, how are you using the internet to still um, give great value and stay in touch with the people you connected with and much more? Oh man, right now, what a shift we we're going through. Um, for the first week, I kind of refused to do Zoom calls. I'm like, man, I'm not going to do everything like, on no, Zoom. No, no. <laughs> I'm like, nah, just like, you know, just give it a week. We'll be fine. And then I'm like, okay, <laughs> like I'm too bored. I need to start like reconnecting with my clients and my friends and everything like that. Um, so thank God for the internet and all of the ways that we can stay connected. Mm -hmm. Um, I've, I mean, there's still plenty of people doing business. Thankfully. Um, I signed up a new client yesterday. Um, people are still connecting. People are still working. There's still a lot going on. And, um, I'm grateful for that to be on that side of things. Um, but it has been really fun to see how everybody's just kind of come together and, mm -hmm. you know, people are just popping up with resources and, um, networking calls and things like that, that have been really fun to. Okay. So I so I got to dive into this, like, what was the reason why you just refused to get on? Because I guarantee you there's a lot of other people that's probably seen a network meeting or a conference uh -huh. on Zoom. And, and like, they're like, this, this isn't regular. This isn't normal. So yeah. like, what is, what, what was some of the reason that took you so long to make that switch? Because I guarantee you somebody probably needs to hear that so they can yeah. make that well, move. Uh, you know, I was kind of in denial at first because I the the week that we got the stay at home orders, I had a whole week, I had practically two weeks um, of meetings booked out, things I was going to events. Um, I had my book signing, which was supposed to be actually today. Oh man! Um, so that got canceled. Hey, go, so well, go ahead and showcase it again so they know. We're gonna yeah, still do some my promotion. Book on yeah. mm -hmm. Um. So there was. I was just kind of like. I, I've done Zoom calls before, like, and like if I didn't want to drive or if it was just something quick, I'd do Zoom calls instead of go meet somebody. So I was just like, I'm like, I don't know. I was just in this weird funk where I was just like, I don't want to be in Zoom calls just to like hang out. Like that seems dumb. But then after a while, like a few days later, when you're like not able to do anything or a weekend passes, I'm like, okay, this might be the only way I can connect. So I'll try it. And then it ended up being a lot of fun. Like, um, I did, of course, the happy hours with my friends. And you know, it was really interesting because there, I have one group that we have like a mini mastermind. And we usually are very structured. We're all about business. And last week, we jumped on a call for like two and a half hours. And we all just like dove into our personal stories and stuff that we'd never made time to before. So I've, I've honestly been amazed at how well you can still really connect and be authentic through Zoom calls or FaceTime. And I've reached out to more people, checked on people in Italy that I haven't talked to. Just, you know, just checking on people like in other states that I know are alone. I sent my cousin a book and, you know, just like it's really created a space for us to reconnect in more um, a real way where we have the time mm -hmm. uh, to be authentic about it. So, you know, I'm going to go ahead and be bold and say this. I feel like um, this, even though it's a crisis and all this, it forced the light bulb to go boom. And I even I feel like not only for you, but for everybody who's you know made to do these more of a Zoom calls and things like that. Yeah. The fact that you were able to connect and build more relationships at a ease quickly mm -hmm. in your venient, your own space. I yeah. guarantee you that people will still, you know, when things get back to normal, will go as regular business. But they're going to be like, you know what, I'm going to add integrate Zoom yeah. now into it. Yeah. And I guarantee you people ha will use this experience to actually yeah. definitely make their business even better because there's so many times, like, oh, I can't make it there. Now people are going to be like, oh, no worries. FaceTime. Like, yeah. what? Yeah, I let's know. do it. <laughs> I, I was thinking about that too. And I had kind of the question in the back of my mind of like all the people who are working from home, I wonder how many businesses will just kind of like switch to that model now or like even my son, we had a Zoom call with his teacher yesterday and it was like his teacher and his dad and me and, you know, we just talked about his class and what he's doing for assignments and stuff. So it's interesting you brought that up because I guarantee it, for a lot of parents, that's probably their first time or first time having a full fledged conversation with their teacher like that. Because usually yeah. you got a way schedule things out like, oh, I'm here. <laughs> yeah. It's a quick parent teacher conference your kid, this, 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 and then, you know, out the door you go, but. Yeah, it was it was interesting and 
we're going to do a weekly Zoom call with her every week to see how she's doing in homeschool. So. Cool, cool, cool. So along with the Zoom, like what other ways are you using social media to take advantage? So go ahead and drop some knowledge. Yeah, and so, help people out. so my day to day, other than being a fanatic about fitness, my day to day is social media management for businesses. So that's what I've done. So um, I have quite a few different clients, different industries that I've been working with. And one of the things that we kind of did, most of my clients kind of shifted their messaging Um from like, you know, talking about their products and what we do in their services. So we kind of switch that over into a more like, um, cause there's a couple of my clients that are closed until, you know, we can, everything can go back to normal. Um, so we've really kind of shifted our messaging into more of a positive, encouraging, kind of being that light instead of like the person who's like counting the death toll or counting how bad it's going to be. Like we're kind of being like with the blogs or whatever content we're putting out, we're trying to take more of a, a, a positive Mm -hmm. um uplifting approach and so i really appreciated that that clients kind of reflects who how i am and i some of them would like ask me to and then other ones i'm like hey is it okay if we adjust our messaging to be more of a light in this world instead of like talking about the product for a couple weeks and the other ones yes go ahead go do that (laughs) yes it's definitely uh the time where you can use uh, social media to your advantage Uh, like in the words of gary v punch 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 i mean jab 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 right hook creating a lot of value, positive energy, and much Mm -hmm. more and feeding to others. Because if you do that in the long term, you will reek of the harvest big time. So this is definitely time to hop up on that. So with that, uh, any other future plans you got coming up and hit us out with a closing strong comment. (laughs) Uh, My future plans, well, you know, like so many other people, I'd love to get things back, um, just to ha- go back to a sense of normalcy. But I think a lot of what we're going through right now is going to kind of be around for a while, like the Zoom calls or just the way we connect with people. Um, I am going to continue working with clients um, on the social media aspect because that is such a powerful tool, like you said right now. Um, my book launch party, I hope, is going to happen in May. I may have to it will happen <laughs> again. It's going to happen. Thank you. Um, so that's kind of an exciting aspect of what I have going on. So I just want to, um, you know, continue spreading the message of being empowered through fitness, having your strong mind, strong body, um, and continue to provide valuable content on my social media platforms as well as my, my cool, clients. Cool. So, so before you drop the mic, that close and comment, where can okay. I find you at? Um, you can find me everywhere at Bridget Therese Romo, um, Bridget Therese Romo on LinkedIn or also on my Facebook. It's Bridget Therese or Bridget Therese Official. So nice, if nice. you type in Bridget Therese, you'll find me. She got it. She's going to be certified. Yeah. She's going to be on Oprah and all these other platforms. Yeah. I, I got lucky this time. On that booth, that's right. <laughs> yeah, nice, nice. So closing comments. Go ahead. You got the mic. Um, well, shoot, I just want to say thank you so much for having me. Um, I would just encourage you, if you've never worked out before, to just start with simple. Um, it can be as much as a walk, but you'll find that doing just a little bit every day um, will make those big, massive improvements and be a light on social media because we have enough darkness. And there we go, dropping the mic. As we go ahead and wrap this up, it's another great episode of Next Level Thinking, bringing you positive vibes and energy and valuable energy to help you take it to the next level. It's your host, Chris Holmes, and today I have my special guest by the name of... Bridget Therese Romo. Awesome. Make sure you subscribe, share, keep the message uh, going and positive energy so we can help uplift, uplift people and help them live positive vibes and unleash the greatness within them. So with that, we're out. Peace and much love. I'm <laughs> sorry.